So, as I just said, we're talking about Chicago's drinking water um, because last week they released their water quality report for the year 2020. So basically, every single municipality, no matter the size, it could be New York City or um, a small town in northern Maine, um, the muni municipality is required to release an annual report that basically spells out everything, not everything, but the key things um, about the drinking water that they're supplying to their constituents. So. Um, and July 1st is kind of the cutoff for these reports to be published, so we've just had an influx of a ton of new data um, that we've kind of been updating as it's been coming in on our blog. So, um, yeah, that being said, there's been a ton of media coverage about um, Chicago, lead pipes, and, you know, President Biden one of his key running points was infrastructure, particularly pertaining to drinking water. Um, so all of this kind of converges in Chicago because you cannot talk about Chicago's drinking water without talking about lead. Um, it's kind of turned into, I don't want to say the new Flint, but a similar situation to Flint where um, a lot of the people living in Chicago are just kind of not aware of what's going on because it's not being made super public. Um, and so that's kind of what the goal of this Instagram Live is today, is just to kind of tell Chicago um, customers that there's a problem. So let's get into it. Um, so the current lead levels in Chicago are 9.1 part per billion. And I realize that that number probably means nothing to some of you, um, people who either work for Hydro-Vive or have a little bit more understanding of drinking water might recognize that that's a pretty high number. Um, but just for a little bit of context, 9.1 part per billion is what has been detected in Chicago's drinking water. So the American Academy of Pediatrics has recommended a level of one part per billion in drinking water. Um, Bottled water, the allowable level of lead is five parts per drill, farts, par <laughs> parts per billion of drinking water, of lead in drinking water. And then of course we have 9.1 in Chicago and the federal action level is a whopping 15 parts per billion. So basically we have these four different levels that we're dealing with when talking about lead in Chicago. We have what pediatricians recommend, we have what bottled water is allowed to have, and we have the legal limit in the US. Um, and Chicago falls somewhere in between. So at hydro -Vive, we very much believe the pediatricians in this case, and the lowest level possible is kind of what we stick with. Um, so this 15 parts per billion, the, the federal allowable level was set in 1991 and has not been updated since. So we're dealing with outdated pipes, outdated infrastructure, and a really outdated law. So it's it's really problematic, especially in Chicago, um, because there's it's such a large city and there's so many people that um, drink Chicago water. So. Um, it's really important also to mention that lead testing is not annual. Um, and you might be thinking, but you said that every year we, these municipalities have to release a report. Um, so in that 1991 law, um, they kind of decided that lead testing should be every three years because you have to go into residential homes to take samples from the tap and they didn't want to be doing this on an annual basis. Um, but it really is a disservice to the residents because lead levels can change in three years. If you are a new homeowner and you might not know, you know, when your house was built or um, the lead levels that were reported on three years ago, those are all things that are necessary in kind of preparing to protect your family. Um, so. Yeah, the last time that Chicago tested their lead pipes was 2018, 
Um, so next year is when they'll actually do lead testing. Um, again, three year basis. And what's also kind of astounding is that treatment facilities test for contaminants every single day. So E. coli, uh, chlorine, any other biologicals, those are daily testing. So every day versus three years, it's just not a full picture of, you know, what, what the actual lead levels are. And on top of that, they're only testing anywhere from 150 to sometimes 500 homes in a city of hundreds of thousands of people. So, um, yeah, this, this law is, is very outdated. Um, and like I said, the lowest, the lower, the better, um, lead is a neurotoxin and we can't stress that enough. So these different levels, the five and 15 are just kind of, uh, are placeholders for what should actually be enforceable. So, um, as I kind of mentioned, Chicago has been in the news a lot and that's because, um, or for drinking water. And that's because in 2020, um, the city of Chicago kind of released this program to replace the lead pipes, the 400,000 still existing lead pipes and lead service line pipes, um, that are kind of scattered throughout the city. And, you know, you might think easy, great. We'll just dig up the pipes and replace them. But this is going to take decades and billions of dollars, quite literally. Um, so it's projected to take $8.5 billion to just replace Chicago's lead pipes. Um, and I believe the federal allocation that the infrastructure plan, which hasn't obviously been approved yet, but the infrastructure plan is um, proposing is $45 billion. So you can kind of see that... Um, we have a ways to go in terms of getting funding for replacing these pipes because it's very invasive. You're digging up the streets, um, kind of section by section, putting in some sort of replacement, and then moving on. So it's it's a really invasive thing for a city to undertake, um, and it costs a lot of money. So it also costs a lot of money for the homeowner. Um, Chicago does have this program where... Um, Households that make more than, I think it's, yeah, $67,300 don't qualify for any sort of um, assistance on replacing the lead service line. So if you make more than that, you're completely on your own. Um, and if you rent, there's nothing you can do. If you are renting your home, it's up to the landlord to decide if they want to replace the lead pipe. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's not in favor of... Um, the oh i got a question here it's not in favor of constituents so someone just asked if we had a similar video regarding san diego water um well that is a great jumping off point because if you have a municipality that you want us to talk about let us know um so we'll do san diego in the next couple of weeks and and i can kind of tell you all about that um so just one last thing about chicago i wanted to talk about the uh, disinfectant that they use. So um, Chicago uses chlorine, uh, sorry, Chicago uses chlorine to disinfect its drinking water, which um, is a pretty common disinfectant. It's used across the country. Um, and it's absolutely crucial in, in ensuring that drinking water is biologically safe. So that means that there's nothing living, no microorganisms or um, like E. coli, whatever, whatever the biological contaminants of concern might be, chlorine completely takes care of that. Um, so it's absolutely crucial. And it's not toxic at the levels that are currently in, or currently allowed in U.S. tap water. Um, so, yeah. Chlorine can make your water taste and smell like a pool. We've all... Um, we've all kind of like traveled to a new city, tried the tap water, and then the first thing you notice is that like really pungent, overwhelming odor of chlorine. Um, so it's safe to drink, but it definitely has that really unpleasant taste and smell to it. Um, and so 
Chlorine is a more volatile version of its counterpart disinfectant called chloramines, which, you know, doesn't have as strong of a taste and smell. Um, and additionally, chlorine can interact with organic matter that is in water naturally and create disinfection byproducts or DBPs. Um, and DBPs are a bit more concerning. So chlorine can kind of indirectly um, impact water quality, but by itself, it's not toxic. Um, so I would definitely check out our blog on DBPs or disinfection byproducts to learn more about this category of contaminants. Um, but they are known to cause cancer and other harmful health effects. Um, and they are considered safe in Chicago water. The levels don't exceed um, the federal limit. However, we don't really understand what a safe level of disinfection byproducts is um, for humans. We just we just need to do more more research and kind of update those those levels to reflect human health. Um, and so, yeah. Um, so I would really recommend. I'll just kind of leave everyone on this. I would really recommend checking out your city's water quality report. Um, and so you can do this by just going to Google and typing in um, your city and follow that by water quality report 2020 because it's for the previous year. So next year it will be 2021. So, you know, for example, for me, it would be um, Arlington, Virginia drinking water report 2020 and it should be one of the top links. Um, but if you do need help finding it, we are more than happy to help you out. So you can send us a DM. Um, you can chat us at hydroweave.com or email us at hello at hydroweave.com and we can find your city's or your town's water quality report for you and send it over and, and give you kind of some background information on the contaminants of concern and what you might need to know um, to make an informed decision about your drinking water. Um, so yeah, we're happy to look that up for you. And unless you're on a private well, um, your city is required to have a water quality report. So um, definitely recommend checking it out. You can find some really interesting information like where your water comes from um, and what they're using for a disinfectant, um, how many people the, the utility services, other really interesting facts um, that that might be might be cool for some people to learn. So I hope you enjoyed this Instagram live and um, we'll post it on the feed so you can share it with your friends in Chicago um, and just make sure that people understand that lead is still very much a problem in Chicago. We have not solved it. Um, and to make sure that you are getting a filter that is designed to remove lead. Obviously we're a water filtration company, so um, you can check out our specs, our NSF certifications by um, asking one of our support team members on chat or email. So um, have a great rest of your day and we'll see everyone next week. And again, let us know if you want us to talk about your municipality next. So yeah, have a good one.